Hello, and thank you for being here with us. You're invited to join us every Sunday here in person at 9 and 11 a.m. or live online at 9 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube. Whether in person or from home, we are so thankful for every opportunity we have to worship with you. God is doing incredible things here at Word of Life, and we are so honored that you chose to be a part of that. Um, first, I want to thank the worship band for doing a tremendous job. Uh, they have a way of wrecking everybody, every service, and it just allowing us to come together and get real with God as a body is an awesome thing. Um, so we're doing something a little different for Mother's Day today. Some of the moms and some of the staff got together, and we were bouncing around ideas and decided that we have such a, we have an incredible youth group. We have an awesome group of seniors and seniors in college that are being pushed out into the world of, you know, it's a transitional phase for so many kids and thought about um, what would be, what would they share with us about what their mom has given them to help prepare? And I was like, yikes, I don't know what a lot of the kids are going to say, but let's put them up there. No, I knew that it was going to be awesome because Pastor Elaine, Miss Sandy, um, Pastor Nathan, Pastor Ian, and Amanda, Sheena in lead have all done an awesome job um, filling in for us moms, but ultimately we know that it all comes down to mama. So mamas, you did a great job raising your kids. And um, you're gonna hear some from some of our kids today that I feel like I've known since forever, and one of them I have known for forever. Um, you're really gonna be blessed, and I know that their, their words are anointed today. Hi everyone, my name is Lisa Free, and I don't know if you know my mom, her name is Amanda Free, she's like the youth director. Um, but yeah, I realize the impact that my mom has, you know, made in my life, it's crazy. Um, a lot of people don't know, but I was adopted a couple of years ago by the Free family, and it was, it's just something that I'm very proud of. But I was not always given like motherly affection all of my life or, you know, love and, you know, like the love that I should have had. And it's just, I get that now and it's just so great. Um, but my mom has also instilled several values and principles that I use every day in life. One of those um, values and principles is self-awareness. And that is something that I have um, very much struggled with and just never really understood like the social cue part of, you know, like public interaction and everything. So that was something that um, I learned, you know, how to be appropriate in public and everything. <laughs> um, another uh, principle that I learned from my mom would be like, you know, having a great work ethic. I was always, um, I always did like the bare minimum in life, honestly, like just never really wanted to go beyond what I, you know, what I could do. And she always tells me over and over again, she's like, Lisa, you need, you need to do, <laughs> you need to do your best and you need to work hard and you'll get somewhere in life that way. And so that's something that I learned and I take on every single day. Another, th another thing that my mom has instilled in me is making time for God. As I get older, I realize that life can get busier with a lot of, you know, activities and work and just her reminding me that, you know, you need to set time for God and, you know, read your Bible every day. Setting time for God is important because it's so easy to neglect priorities without, you know, and like distractions can be, can easily overcome you. So just having that reminder has always has been like pretty powerful in my life. And the last thing that my mom has instilled in my life is keeping an open mind. She has always told me that there's a whole world of opportunities and that I should consider new ideas and and not to shy away from like intimidating. You know, sometimes things can be intimidating and not to shy away from that. And um, just, you know, getting out of my comfort zone was always something that she taught me. All of these, all of these uh, principles and values have shaped who I am today, and I owe her a huge thank you for that. <laughs> hey. 
Hey, I'm Kelsey. And I'm Serena. So we are homegrowns and we've been going to Word of Life our entire lives. Growing up, we were always volunteering or participating in different areas of the church. After our parents got divorced, our mom encouraged us to stay connected with the church and to continue serving. In fact, we were at a time in our lives where we actually ended up more involved in volunteering more in the different areas of the church than we did previously. Our mama always taught us that serving came first and that it's a priority for us to stay actively involved in the church. But in order for us to do that, we had to stay connected ourselves into what God was calling us to do, growing in our own personal relationship with Him as we volunteered and poured out into other people. Even through the struggles that she was going through, she knew that staying connected to God and to our church family would be the way that we would make it through. Even growing up though, she always taught us that it was our personal relationship with God. No other person could fill in that gap because it had to be us actively seeking Him with everything we had so that we could serve and pour into other people. Going into our adult years, our mom never told us what she thought we should do with our lives. She always encouraged us to seek after God and His plan. The verse that helped, helped us as a family was Jeremiah 29 11. So when I started college, I was on the path going for a degree in physical therapy, and my mom just kept telling me to follow God. He quickly though, God turned me around and very clearly told me what His plans for me actually were. And when I went to my mom and told her what God had told me, she said, okay, and within a week, I switched majors and schools. I graduated in December of 2019 with my bachelor's degree in elementary education and special education. I don't know exactly what's coming next, but I know that my mom is there and she will be supporting me and encouraging me through everything. So my original plan was to go to college for music therapy, but when that didn't work out, I was actually looking into what else I could do and my mom just took me to a service at Victory Family Church. And in that service, they announced about a school that they were opening. As soon as we heard, it was, it was like my mom knew exactly that was my next step. My mom never told me what to do. Instead, she just kept telling me to seek after God and what He had for my life. I graduated from Waymaker School of Ministry in June of 2020 with my degree in ministerial leadership and children's ministry. As I was looking at my next step, God just kept telling me to hold on. And my mom just kept telling me to trust Him through the storm that I was going through at the time. In March of 2021, I was hired by Victory as their children's director for their Meadville campuses. This does mean that I have to move two hours away. My mom and I have always been so close, and I know that this next journey is going to be hard for both of us, but I know that I will always be her little princess. Even though she doesn't want me to move that far away, and I don't really want to move that far away, she has encouraged me through it all, and we know that this next step is what God has for my next season. Some of our favorite memories with her is her taking us on adventures. It doesn't have to be far away, but it's just us spending time together with her. Getting to go to places like the zoo or downtown Pittsburgh or even Myrtle Beach and just different places like that. It doesn't have to be that far away, but it's some of our greatest memories with her. Now she's done so much for us and we could go on and on about all the values and lessons that she has taught us, but when it comes down to it, she's the one that encouraged us to seek after God and to build our relationship with Him. And without that, I don't know where we would be. She never complains and just keeps going no matter what storms we face as a family, knowing that God is right there with us. We couldn't have asked for a better mom. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Hi. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms here today. Um, my name is Lily and my mom is Daisy. If you come on Wednesdays, you'll probably see her on the platform because she plays with the Wednesday night band. Um, she sings and plays the piano, and I think she's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this day is what it titles itself as, happy. I hope that you can be surrounded by the flowers from your children rather than their bad attitudes from having to sweep the floor. <laughs> I hope they give you cards instead of arguing about who's going to do the dishes next. <laughs> I hope they tell you they love you rather than being too busy to talk. This is the most important and it's something I do every day because my mom is the most amazing person I know. Um, I would describe her as incredibly selfless, patient, kind, compassionate, and strong, just to name a few. Many times I think there's nothing she can't do. Well, only sometimes because there is one thing my mom simply cannot handle, rodents. <laughs> which includes flying as well as non-flying. <laughs> to begin this explanation of her weakness is the story of the bats. Um, we, 
We used to get bats in our attic every once in a while until we fixed the chimney. And one time, while my mom and I were up there looking for something, a bat swooped down from wherever it was on the ceiling. Of course, she screamed and bolted down the stairs. <laughs> now, I'm not sure if she was closer to the stairs. I was just in shock, or she was running really fast. Either way, um, she was completely down the stairs while I was still on the top. <laughs> I started freaking out, thinking, wow, she really just left me up here with the bat. <laughs> when I got down the stairs, I asked her, like, why did you do that? And <laughs> she told me she thought I was right behind her, but I knew the truth. Her fear for the bat overpowered her love for me, and in that moment, I had never felt more abandoned or betrayed. I'm just joking, obviously. Other than that instance, though, my mom has been pretty great. She's always there for me and supports all my goals. I've changed my ideas for career paths many times, but with each switch, she has encouraged me. When I was four, I wanted to be a waitress at the Chinese buffet so that I could wear the apron with the pocket for the straws because <laughs> it looked fun to like pass them out. <laughs> Then I wanted to become a professional dancer, a writer, a musical therapist, a physical therapist, and as of late, a registered dietitian. With each of these changes, my mom has always encouraged me. She has never belittled me or tried to make me do things I'm not passionate about. Growing up, she made life about doing what we loved and doing everything we did to the best of our abilities. I thank her for the drive I have in life to pursue my passions. She also raised us on biblical principles, so I know that whatever I feel God is leading me to do, I can accomplish through him. I always say to myself that my number ones in life are God and my mom, because I can go to both of them about anything and everything. Without her, I wouldn't have the foundation I do in Christ, and I can't imagine living a life without that foundation. The ideal she has instilled in me the support she never stops giving, and the foundation of Christianity she has laid have made me who I am today. I know it's biased and extremely cliche to say that my mom is the best mom, but she truly is the best. <laughs> Thank you, and again, happy Mother's Day. Good morning, everybody, and happy Mother's Day. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Josiah Steiner. My family's probably been coming to this church for six or seven years. And as you probably figured out by now, I've been asked to uh, share about my mom, and even though, share about my mom, and the impact that she's had on my life, and which I kind of was hesitant to, because obviously public speaking is not my talent. But, <laughs> but, um, it's something I really wanted to do because just of how much she's blessed me throughout my whole life and how much of an impact she's had on me. And so in preparing for this today, I thought it would be important before I start talking about my mom that I would share what the Bible, examples of godly mothers in the Bible and what role moms play in our lives. And the first thing I thought of was how throughout the whole Bible, how many examples of godly women and mothers there are. I mean, I could go on all day, but just to get, give an example of a few, I mean, you can think of Sarah, uh, mother of Isaac and uh, God's promised child to Abraham, or Hannah, the mother of Samuel, of Samuel, who was one of the judges, greatest judges of Israel, and of course, Mary, Jesus' mother. All these remarkable women fulfilled God's calling on their lives and were able to set an example of what being a godly mother looks like. Through their reliance on God, they were also able to exhibit the character of God himself, especially to their families, and were able to show the heart of God himself, the heart of God himself to their children. As it says in Isaiah 66, 13, God declares, as a mother tenderly comforts her child, so I will tenderly comfort you. Like so many of the remarkable mothers throughout the Bible have displayed, this verse describes how much impact our moms can have on our lives because they play such an important role in showing a unique area of God's heart and his love towards us. Fortunately for me, I've been blessed to have a mom that has been able to show me this in my life as well. Some of you may already know my mom, Carolyn, from seeing her around the church, or maybe you've done a church event with her. She's pretty awesome. And since the day I was born, she's been a steady guide in my life and so much of my life, with her undying love for my whole family and her constant willingness to always put her needs before her own. 
our needs before our own. In every part of my life, she has always been there, always willing to love unconditionally, and always ready to provide godly wisdom in every situation. And throughout my life, she's taught me many things, from the most basic stuff like how to fold clothes to even teaching me school. But more importantly than anything else, especially spiritually, as she has taught me so much of what the Father's heart of love and grace looks like towards us, and probably really even before I was old enough to remember. Whether that be spending time regularly to sit down, have devotions as a family, and spend time in prayer, or know that she is always praying for me, she has daily provided a godly impact on my life. Consistently, I have not, consistently, I have not only seen her encourage us to press deeper into the things that God has for our lives by encouraging us to spend time in God's word and growing closer to him, always encouraging us to be involved in the things God is doing at church and her providing godly wisdom to us all the time, but maybe even more importantly, I've seen her lead by example by, sh by seeing her continually draw closer to him each day herself as well and seeing her servant's heart towards those around her. More than anything else, the example she has set in my life has been able to show me more and more of what it means to understand what a living a life for Christ looks like and how to grasp, as what Paul mentions in Ephesians 3, the ability to understand how wide, how long, how deep, and how high the Father's great love is for us, which is the greatest gift she could ever give me. So as to conclude, I was sitting up last night wondering exactly how I should finish what I was gonna say today. And so I came across a quote from Mother Teresa that my mom actually shared with me, and I felt it was pretty fitting. She said something along the lines of, on the day when we come face to face with God, we will not be judged on how much we have done, but rather how much we have, or rather if we have loved well. And this is really, and this really is a powerful role moms can demonstrate, can have in demonstrating God's heart for his children and showing how to display this compassion to others. And I would just say to finish, words cannot really describe how grateful I am to God for giving, blessing me with a mom who has showed me this truth as well. How's everybody doing? It's uh, a little bit bigger of a crowd than my uh, public speaking class, so bear with me. Uh, as some of you may know me, my name is Jacob Bezela. My mom's name is uh, Tony Bezela, and she's been a dance leader here for my whole life and much longer. When I was asked to do this speech, I thought it was a great idea for two reasons. One, I get to honor my mother and brag about how good she is, and two, I hope she takes this at her, as her Mother's Day gift because I didn't buy her a card and flowers. So. <laughs> So I'm not gonna lie, Miss Lisa came to me for this idea two weeks ago and I was thinking on and off about it and couldn't really find a topic so I pushed it for a Saturday night kind of deal so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> but um, I was thinking about it and I, I really came to the fact to see how sacrificial mothers really are. Uh, my mom, she always makes sure her family is her priority and makes sure she does anything she can to make sure we're happy. She's always there for the moments in my life that I that I enjoy, and I could share a lot of them, but I think I only have a time for few. If you know me, I'm a very passionate kid, and I'm passionate about a lot of little things, and these little things when I was younger happened every other week. Some examples of these things would be flipping on the trampoline, making paper airplanes, or just solving Rubik's Cubes. And the thing about each one of these is how my mom was there to support me each one, even though she knew the next week I'd be onto something new. I'd constantly nag her to watch me do flips on the trampoline or, or solve a piece of plastic, and she was always there supporting me. And for that, the memories will stick with me forever, and I'm thankful for, for her. As I said before, she sacrifices her time to make sure I'm happy. My mom always makes sure to get up with me before school to make sure I get my breakfast and make sure that I match my clothes because I even have problems with that every day. So she, uh, she loses sleep every morning to make sure that I'm happy. And I always look over those little things and it upsets me because she always has a smile on her face making sure that I'm happy. And I just, I just wanna say I'm sorry for that because the little things like that are so, such a big impact on my life and I, I just need to be more grateful for her. Now on to sports. This is something that she's helped me with my whole life. I've always been into sports. She uh, sacrifices her money and her time to make sure that I could be the best I could be at my sport and make sure she's there to support me. And um, when she's there and I see her up in the stands, I get so happy knowing that I'm loved and I just, I just wanna thank God for her and thank God that she's, she's loving and she's always there for me. 
And uh, I'd like to take this time to end and thank God for not only my mother, but her love and support she provides for me and my family. And um, she's not here at this service, but I'm hoping next service she likes my speech good enough. So then, uh, so then I don't have to buy her a card and flowers. <laughs> If you don't know my mom, Lisa Morbonis, then you're definitely missing out. Hi, my name is Faith Morbonis, and I'm going to be talking about my awesome mom. So one thing about my mom is she's always been my number one supporter. I've danced for about eight years, and through those eight years, my mom always helped me get ready for dance and took me from and to dance. We always had this thing with Miss Tony, my dance teacher, about getting the perfect hairstyle. It had to be low and flat. And every year it was always a struggle, but my mom always fought for that perfect bun so Miss Tony wouldn't say something. So that's just kind of like a funny memory we had. Another memory I had with my mom was whenever the dance studio was below a cafe and every Saturday we would go up and eat breakfast. And it's just like the simple things that like matter and that I remember, but it's just the awesome little memory I have of mom and I. Another thing about my mom is she's always supporting me with horses. If you don't know me, I'm very involved with horses. That's like my life besides Jesus. So I'm competing usually almost every week. So I'm pretty busy and my mom's always there helping me to look my best and for the horse freckles to look her best. She claims she's not a horse mom, but she's been doing it for so many years. She definitely is. And when she's not there, me and my dad are just like running back and forth like crazy people. Another thing about my mom is she's definitely raised the bar for me. Not only is she gorgeous, like literally stunning, all my friends are always like, wow, your mom is so pretty. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Like literally, if I don't look like that at her age, I'm gonna be really mad. But my mom also has great friends. We'll always be in the car and she'll be, She'll be like, Faith, who do you wanna, who do you wanna call? And I'll be like, anyone, like, I don't care. She'll call someone, we'll be like, oh my gosh, like, hey, what's up? It's just awesome that her friends can also be my friends. Another big thing about my mom is she's an awesome role model through Christ. She's always involved with the church, either doing kids choir, youth choir, adult choir, helping on staff, or helping the worship team back in youth. And it's really encouraged me to stay involved in my church. I'm involved in a lot of activities such as the youth choir, singing back in youth, and a lot of other things just helping out. But it's definitely encouraged me to keep Jesus close and I'll especially use that whenever I go to college. When my mom and I were searching for colleges, we wanted to make sure that there was either a campus ministry or a church nearby my school. I am planning on going to the University of Finley and they have an awesome campus ministry, so that's really exciting. I'm also trying to get involved and I might try out for the worship team, so that's also exciting. Another thing about my mom is that she loves what she does. She loves coming to the church to work and she loves teaching music. So it's really encouraged me that I want to make sure that I'm doing the right career for myself and that I'm really passionate about it, which I always never knew like I changed my career so many times and what I was going to study in college like I never really knew and this year God really put on my heart what I was supposed to do and that's all because of my mom because if my mom wasn't there encouraging me and telling me how to prepare and what to do for college then I definitely wouldn't have figured it out. I'm planning on studying equine studies which most people don't know what that is but it's pretty much how to train a horse and I just want the horse background and I'm going to use occupational therapy to help kids with disabilities on horses. So it's going to be really exciting because I'll be able to use horses in my lifestyle every day which is awesome because that's what I'm so passionate about. Some sayings my mom reminds me daily about is it's not lost until mom finds it. For some reason, my mom can find anything with no problem and will always be struggling packing for a horse show. I'll always be packing the trailer and I'll be like, Dad, like I can't find this. Like it's nowhere. I've been looking for for, out, for hours. And my dad will be like, let me call the boys. I'll be like, okay, okay. So he'll call the boys. The boys will be like, yeah, can't find it. I'll be like, okay, let's call mom. Mom, like five minutes later, oh, here it is. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like what? Like. I better get that gene. Like, it hasn't kicked in yet. Like, I don't want to have to, like, when I'm a mom, like, call grandma. Be like, hey, grandma, like, can you come up and find this? Like, we got to leave for school soon. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, that hasn't kicked in yet. Hopefully that will kick in for college. But that's one thing about my mom. She's awesome. After my mom does something awesome, she'll be like, this is why we celebrate Mother's Day. And I'll be like, yeah, we should celebrate Mother's Day every day. 
One point I want to end on is, being a mom isn't easy, and that's why fathers shouldn't do it. Sorry, Dad. Love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. I thank God that I'm not a mother. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen is right. Didn't those kids do a great job? Absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I tell you, I got to thinking about how these kids were brought up in Christian homes and the testimony that they have for the Lord Jesus Christ. I know many of us did not have that experience. I did not grow up in a Christian home. I grew up in a somewhat religious home, but not a Christian home. And then the day came where Jesus Christ took hold of our family, my mother, my father, and uh, my brothers. And it is just absolutely wonderful to see the Spirit of God move. But those many, many years before that, the number of years before that, we didn't experience the goodness of God in the way that we could have. So I thank the Lord for Christian families and you mothers and fathers that are raising your children in Christian homes and the principles of the Word of God. God bless you. It's absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Well, it is time now to give out some gifts. Could we do that? All right? We're going to give some pies away. All right? And as usual, uh, we do believe in tithing here at Word of Life. And, and, a, and a tenth of the pie comes to the pastor. All right, so uh, anyhow, do we have, did, did every mother get a ticket? Is that what you're asking me, Sheena? Yeah. All the mothers got a ticket? Yeah. Any, no. Any mother that didn't get a ticket, please raise your hand, okay? We will make sure you get a ticket, and you are in the drawing for the new Cadillac. All right, so, uh, all right, you could use that, huh, David? Absolutely, absolutely. And speaking of wonderful teenagers, we have them delivering the pies today, all right? You guys didn't sample any of those pies, did you? No? All right. Okay. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Do we have the tickets in the bucket? We taking care of all mothers that was to get a ticket? You got a ticket? Do we have more tickets for the bucket? Okay, Joe, bring them on over here. Did you put a ticket in, honey? I didn't. You didn't? Here. I have 10 right here in my pocket. Here's a... <laughs> sure to win. I said, Courtney said if it's like bingo at the beach, she's not going to win nothing. <laughs> Down at the beach, my wife drugged me, kicking and screaming to bingo. And uh, it was everything I expected. <laughs> everything. So, we, we weren't very, very successful at bingo, but, but the last, the, boy, I didn't go to that one. That's probably what, what, why. Anyhow, they held up a bag of Skinny Pop. This was what the winner was going to get, Skinny Pop, and Courtney prophesied, prophesied. She didn't declare, she prophesied that my wife was going to win the bag of Skinny Pop. My question was, what are you trying to say? <laughs> And so, anyhow, she won the bag of Skinny Pop at Bingo. You only get one card. I'd have preferred $10,000 more, but nonetheless. Here we go for the first pie, all right? I'm assuming, are all the, the first three numbers, four numbers the same? Do we know? I don't know. Let me see. No, they're not. Okay. 381-9914. Let me repeat it. 381 Nine nine one four, over here. Okay, would you please stand here? Can't see who you are, but there she is. God bless you. All right. Second ticket. Blue ticket. Seven nine three three four five. Let me repeat. Oh, there we got in the back. God bless you, dear. Happy Mother's Day to you. Third ticket, 381 
This is a white ticket, 3819926. 3819926. Who has that? God bless you. Happy Mother's Day to you. Would you stand here just for a moment to take it back to you? Thank you so much. White ticket, 3819966. Who has that? Right here. Where? Oh, right here. God bless you. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. This isn't fair. This is not fair. No, it doesn't. You give that pie back right now, okay? I haven't tasted everyone's baking goods in the church, but I have tasted hers. And she's one of the best bakers I've ever encountered, okay? So, anyhow, you used to bake for Seven Springs, was it? Laurel Valley Golf Club. Golf Club. Golf Club. Okay, about the same thing. Okay, so. <laughs> last one. Okay, last one. Blue ticket. Here we go. Seven, nine, three, three, four. How many are holding on right now? Zero. Ah. Oh. Who got it? Okay, back there. God bless you. Stand for a moment, dear. God bless you and happy Mother's Day to you. Absolutely wonderful. Okay, now we have a gift for all the mothers, right? All right? And we're going to go up here. So if all the mothers could stand, we have a gift for you. As soon as you get your gift, please be seated. We're going to have you stand again in just a moment. You guys give us some passing out gifts music or something like that, you know? <laughs> I feel I need to be doing something up here, you know? Just sing. Just sing? No, you don't want to hear that. Not at this point. <laughs> My voice has gotten somewhat raspy over the years, and I figured, you know, I should have had this in my early years when I was in bands and rock groups and things like that. I could have really made a career out of it, you know, with this raspy voice. I'd have sounded like Rod Stewart, okay? But um, today, it just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. I know what some of you are thinking. Who in the world's Rod Stewart, huh? To ask your mom about it, all right? All right, we're just about done. We've got a few mothers down front here that did not get a gift, so thank you, Miss Lisa and Miss Lily. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. God bless you. Now, I think all the mothers received their gift. I'm going to ask all you mothers to stand. And I will also ask any of you girls uh, who are married, uh, you're endeavoring to conceive and struggling at that, I would ask you to stand also. If you would do that. We prefer that you be married. All right. Did you get that? Come on, that was pretty funny if you ask me, you know. <laughs> so, anyhow, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for these precious, precious women. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, oh God, that guides them, leads them, directs them, teaches them, instructs them, oh God. Continue to grant them wisdom and insight and understanding in all that they do. May they be a tremendous, tremendous influence and godly uh, 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 touch in the lives of their children, my God. I pray, Father, regardless how, how old they get, how old their children get, that they would still be able to impart to them spiritual insight and wisdom and godliness. 
I pray that they would be godly examples, O oh Lord, all the days of their lives. And it would not be said by them, do as I say, not as I do. No, do as I do because they are godly. They are godly. They live godly. They speak godly. We declare that out over them. Any woman, oh God, that's standing at this moment that has found herself struggling with pregnancy, my God, even with miscarriages, in the name of Jesus Christ, we speak life over their bodies in the name of our Christ and our King. We speak life over their husbands' bodies in the name of Jesus our Lord. And we are thanking you, Father God, that in months from now, we will hear testimonies of that which was declared this day by the power of the Holy Spirit, dedicating children, hallelujah, that was pro proclaimed on Mother's Day 2021. We thank you, Father God, for your goodness, for love, for mercy. Thank you, Father God, for many, 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 many blessings as each and every one of these women have been, will be. And we give you thanks in Jesus' wonderful, wonderful, wonderful name. And all of God's people said together in agreement, amen and amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask for everyone to stand if you would. God bless you. That's it right there. We don't have anything else. That's it. All right. Good. Don't want to miss anything. Hey, listen, I don't know if you noticed it yesterday. Did you see it uh, 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 pelting down uh, hail? Uh, do you know last year at Mother's Day, we were passing out gifts because the church was closed down at that point. We were passing out gifts to mothers out here with, with winter coats and gloves on. And I, had a, I have a video actually on my phone, but I have a video of it just pounding down snow. It was either the day before Mother's Day or the day of Mother's Day, one or the other. Hallelujah. So, so much for global warming. Anyhow. <laughs> Anyhow. Hallelujah. Well, I pray you've been blessed today. We love you so much, and we pray God's favor and goodness to be upon you in Jesus' awesome, wonderful, glorious name. I'll be back in the saddle again next week. Looking forward to that. Some things that are stirring in my heart I want to share with you. And believe it or not, I believe I got some revelation down at the beach, and that's almost impossible to do for me. Okay, get revelation at the beach when I'm in well, never mind. Anyhow, so let's give a shout of victory on three. Here we go. One, two, three. Thank you again for joining us. We pray you are blessed and encouraged by today's service, and we invite you to join us again next week. Our services go live every Sunday at 9 a.m. on Facebook, YouTube, and at wordoflife.church. We also meet in person every Sunday at 9 and 11 a.m. If you would like to know more about what it means to have a relationship with Jesus, please reach out to us. We have some incredible resources that we would love to share with you, and they'll encourage you and teach you more about God's goodness and His great plans for your life. If God is using our church to change your life and you would like to help us lead people to life in Jesus by giving, you can do so by visiting wordoflife.church give, or you can text the amount you would like to donate to 84321. Follow along with us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube if you would like to know more about what God is doing in and through Word of Life Church. Thank you for helping us lead people to life in Jesus. We love you, God loves you, and we are so thankful that you chose to spend time with us today.